<laughs> Welcome back to another masterclass video, you guys. We just spent five minutes of me practicing the name of this place. <laughs> Tare, right? Yeah. Tare viewpoint is where we're at. Tare. Yeah, okay, here we go again. <laughs> so anyway, a beautiful place. Uh, we've been here once before. This is where we found the flying snake. Yes. Actually, right there in that tree. But anyway, today we are going to talk about one of my favorites, Orthriophis beauty rat snakes, you guys. One of my favorites. We are working with a whole bunch of different subspecies of those, and we're kind of living right here in the middle of their territory. We can basically go north, east, south, or west, and we can encounter pretty much a good number of subspecies, even some locality animals. Caves are our favorite place to go check out and these guys love caves. So you can even find some locality animals when you're exploring caves. But anyway, let's get into this, you guys, beauty rat snakes. So beauty rat snakes are a non-venomous colubrid. There are several subspecies. They occur in many, many countries here in Southeast Asia. The common name is beauty rat snake. That is the one that we choose to use most of the time. Cave racer is another one. Their colors vary quite a lot depending on locality and also which subspecies we're talking about. They eat birds, bats, and are pretty much opportunistic feeders. They have very good eyesight, but of course the populations that live in caves are doing so in complete darkness. The caves are interesting because I have noticed that populations living within caves a lot of times will kind of develop their own appearance or color. And if you think about it, unlimited food supply in there, the snakes congregate in there and they breed and reproduce. They lay their eggs and there's really no reason for them to leave. It's probably some really beautiful isolated populations of beauty rat snakes living in caves something that we're always drawn to. Now, some of these localities can reach eight and nine feet. Really, really good size rat snakes for the colubrid family. I've seen some really impressive animals. So captive care and acclimation. These snakes actually make really great captives. They adjust well to captivity. And the majority of the animals that are in the hobby these days are captive bred. That takes all the work out of it for you. They're pretty straightforward as captive bred. I have worked with wild-caught Sumatrans and Ridleyi, and pretty much the biggest hurdle is figuring out whether or not an individual we eat rodents or birds, and that's it. These animals have very good eyesight. I recommend hide boxes, and if you are acclimating wild-caught beauty rat snakes, I recommend that you keep it dark, minimize the foot traffic. When you feed, uh, drop and go, do not stick around and watch. Those animals sometimes will just become into their defensive mode and they will not feed for you. So I recommend removing all stress factors, keep it very private and dark, and those animals should acclimate quite easily. Now these snakes do better with a little bit of cooler temperatures than other tropical colubrids. So I usually keep mine with a warm spot about 83 to 85. I keep them on coconut husk or cypress mulch, water bowl and a hide box. They are semi-arboreal, so you can provide branches. And that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward snakes. Breeding beauty rat snakes. These were actually the very first colubrid that I ever bred. I got my first pair of Taiwan beauties in 1998. They were a very young pair. And all I did was feed them heavy to see if I could get them to breed at a smaller size or a younger age, and they did. They bred for me. They were only like two and a half years old, maybe something like that. Very young animals. They'll grow fast if you feed them hard. It was kind of a experiment of mine. I wasn't like in a rush to push them, but I just wanted to see if it could be done. They breed very readily in captivity. So by now, I think you guys all realize that palpating for follicles is a big part of how I do my breeding programs. However, with Orthriophis, while I do employ this tactic, I do not rely on it as heavily when I do my pairings. Orthriophis are not cannibalistic. They can be paired usually without any issues. You do have to watch for a feeding response, of course, but that goes with any other snake. 
Now I've noticed with Orthreophis that they can build follicles and ovulate really, really fast and it can take you by surprise. Therefore, with this particular genus, I like to pair animals together and just kind of see what happens. A lot of times the males will start courting females and it'll trigger them to go ahead and develop follicles and ovulate. It's really not that difficult. So I just tend to pair kind of as I see fit. Double clutches, no problem. If you feed the female enough and keep her nutrition up in order to be able to go through the process. So establishing babies, depending on the size of the female, they can lay egg clutches numbering from six to 12 and even upwards of that number if you have a really big adult female. We choose to incubate our beauty rat snake eggs no different than any of the other colubrids that we breed and the low 80s to reduce the possibility of any kinking and we just waited out the extra amount of days that it'll take for them to hatch. Now at those temperatures they will take about 60 days to hatch and as we've discussed in our previous masterclass videos we wait for the first one to pip and then we will manually pip the rest of the eggs. That's the best way to do it. We do not pull the baby snakes out of the eggs. We let them sit and absorb their yolk sacs leave the eggs on their own they know when they're ready and that's pretty much it so another nice thing about establishing the babies they will almost always feed readily on live pinky mice as first meals usually after about two or three meals we try to switch them over to frozen thawed and it's a pretty simple process it's one of the pluses about orthriophis so we have bred ridley eye and blue beauties we have added sumatrans and some chinese animals to the mix now there are some beautiful Chinese morph animals out there. Some of them are hybrids and some of them are pure. If it's a big deal to you, then you can just hold out and look for the pure animals. They are very beautiful. And we have chosen to keep everything pure and breed them by locality, even to the point where if we have, for example, Ridley Eye that we have collection data on, we are also gonna keep those animals pure by locality on top of that. So my final thoughts, Orthriophis, truly one of my favorites. We have brand new hatchlings. We have eggs still incubating in our facility in Malaysia. All of those animals should be ready to come over in June into the US in our shipment. Now being that we live here in Southeast Asia, we have a huge advantage because we are able to source new animals, locality animals and that sort of thing. If you stay tuned into the channel, we will share all of those developments with you. And that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Take care.